Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, you are going to hear the voice of a man who will tell you some tremendously important facts. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Uh, it is such an honor to have Emmanuel Dager today on the um, Reality Revolution. We have so much to talk about. Emmanuel Dager is a amazing multi best selling author, teacher, and founder uh, of the healing technology, the core work method. Emmanuel's message of healing, personal transformation, and love is resonating deeply with the heart and mind of those who are on a path to self realization. Emmanuel has quickly gained recognition on the world stage for his unique healing gifts, wisdom, and humanitarian efforts on behalf of refugees, women, and children. And I just got done reading Easy Breezy Prosperity, and Emmanuel's got an amazing story to tell about his past and his journey, and I can't wait to talk to him about it. So welcome to the Reality Revolution, Emmanuel. Hey, brother. Thank you so much for having me today. So in your book, you talk about your, your childhood growing up in a civil war, sleeping on the concrete, and this sort of created a structural basis for your prosperity and your future path and learning about service. So share your story with everyone about um, what happened in your childhood and how, you know, a, a lot of people that could go through that experience could have made it um, into a terrible thing. And, you know, the world is terrible, but you turned it um, into a wonderful thing. It transformed your life. So. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so basically, um, I grew up in the Civil War in Lebanon, and uh, it lasted from 1975 to 1990, 1992-ish. Um, and I was right in the middle of that. And it was basically my mom and I, we were um, living in a convent, um, which I'm grateful for looking back because it did there was definitely some safety there that maybe somebody who didn't live behind those convent uh, walls may not have experienced. So I'm grateful for that. But, um, you know, whenever we would go out to the market or if we needed to get anything, um, you know, we experienced a lot of tra tragedy, um, a lot of uh, bombs, a lot of guns, um, a lot of situations. So um, war is not good but what <laughs> war is not good um but i looking back i feel like um sometimes you have to go through the fire just like everyone has their own experience um for me it just happened to be that was one of them that was like the first one and i was super young um and i look back and i see that it really helped me cultivate this real deep sense of rooting for the underdog. I always root for the underdog. I always want um, the people who are marginalized or people who are not treated fairly and and with respect, I really uh, champion for them. So that's kind of like what um, awakened within me at that time. At the same time, I was developing some physical um, ailments. I had scoliosis, I had um, psoriasis, um, speech impediment, like a lot of different things. I didn't speak for a couple of years because I just chose to, but at the same time, there was something in my brain that was like not letting me. So there was a lot of stuff happening, PTSD. Um, so fast forward, we came to the States. There's a lot of uh, story there, but we can chat about that another time. We came to the States uh, when I was 11 and um, so that was like a lot of adjustment to uh, getting used to. But at the same time, um, you, so we moved to Indiana because my mom's sister, my aunt lived there and there was so much farmland, so much open field where you can just breathe and ride your bike and just be a kid. So I think I started getting to be a kid at 11 years old um, and kind of do some of that healing. So I think nature, along with having a mom who was really open to alternative methods, we would go to Western doctors, they basically said, I needed to get a, you know, metal rod in my spine, um, to, to even have a straight back and, and function. But I just didn't, and my mom and I actually, we just didn't feel like that was the way for us. So um, through research, through um, meditation, prayer, uh, learning about different alternative methods like acupuncture um, and a lot of different other modalities, I was actually able to heal. And then it really cultivated a deep desire to want to help others experience, you know, people who are going through a lot of hardship, who've been told no, or 
that have had a lot of doors slam in their face. Like I want to give them an opportunity to show them that they can actually heal themselves. So that's what I'm passionate about is empowering people to have the tools to actually heal themselves because, you know, there's a lot of gurus and teachers out there and, and that's great, but really it's about empowering the, the person that they are supporting to receive uh, that, that enlightenment or that um, desire to heal themselves. Yeah, one of the fundamental things you talk about in, in the book I mentioned, Easy Breezy Prosperity, definitely everyone get it, uh, is one of the, 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 the fundamental shifts that you had in moving towards prosperity was being of service, uh, of moving beyond yourself and being of service. And sometimes that sounds cliche. I mentioned that on my podcast, but when people hear that, they think, oh, that means I got to go work. It's not really that. Explain what you meant by this shift in thinking and acting towards service and, and how it led to prosperity in your life. Thank you so much. So to me, prosperity is spirituality. That's the first thing that I wanted to share with with your audience is yeah. that uh, prosperity, you know, there's a lot of wealth, get rich books and, you know, bless them. They're amazing. They can help a lot of people and, and they're really left brain. So very analytical, very structured. So um, and I honor that and I do operate highly in that. But at the same time, when I saw my mom struggling, when I saw uh, we lived way below poverty uh, level and ba barely had food to eat or uh, rarely had hot water. So there was a lot of stuff that I experienced um, that I think gave me a desire to start questioning why, why, and not from a victim consciousness, but why is the world that's so beautiful, that it has so much good in it, why would somebody or why would why do people have to experience that kind of poverty and i started to realize more and more as i as i got older is that it's just a consciousness it's a way of being so that really opened up um a path to becoming more connected to spirit and and the universe and so once I realized that prosperity is not an outside thing, but it's an inside thing, something that's really between you and yourself and starting to show up for yourself in a different way and start to really use you and how you show up for you as the mirror of how the world shows up for you, because ultimately that's what the world is. It's a reflection of how you are showing up and treating yourself. And so once I started doing that, I realized that it's not really about being of service to get anything, but it's just more about being of service to the universe that is you. You are the universe, you are source, you are creator, it's inside of you. And being of service is one of the greatest way that you are honoring that part of you. And so I quickly learned early on that being of service, uh, you know, even, even kind of studying and understanding that whole thing when a lot of religions, they have like tithing, like 10% and all, and you hear it all the time, just understanding it and realizing that it's really about the we rather than the me, because that's what, that's what life is about. That's what makes life meaningful is when you have precious moments with people that you love and you care about and you make a difference. So once I shifted from kind of like a lack mentality to more of a service, how can I serve? How can I help humanity? Um, everything kind of opened up for me. And, and that's sort of what I share and, and help others do for themselves. Now, your, your book and, and your YouTube channel had resonated with me. As you say at the beginning of your book, you've read millions of books, you've read them all, you were, you're like that information sponge and, and you had your own personal experiences, um, just an insatiable desire to learn more. And some of the stuff you were basically writing this book and your others um, for yourself. It was a book that you wish you could have read <laughs> in the past, right? Yes. So you have yes. some really interesting techniques and ideas in the book. Uh, at the beginning, you mentioned using mantras and you have some pretty cool meditations on your channel where you use mantras. And you, you say that using mantras had brought prosperity and abundance and um, a lot of other things in your life. You kind of give some instructions on how to do it. So first, do I always need to go 108 times when I do my mantras? Um, 
you know, that, that was the first thing I wanted to ask. You mentioned that you use a mala beef and stuff. Is that true? You don't have to. Um, basically, as long as I actually do it way more. So when I'm walking my dog in the morning or right. in the evening, I'm, you know, that's literally what I'm doing. And it's just really more about the intention. What is the intention? Because, you know, we're living, uh, as you know, uh, so many people are on autopilot. They're just kind of walking through life, not fully living, not fully um, present and realizing that they their their beliefs and their um intentions can make a huge difference so sometimes when when we are on autopilot these types of affirmations or mantras can really help disrupt some of that habitual mental chatter that sometimes makes us feel defeated or less than or lack or whatnot it really helps us step into this space of um awareness and consciousness and mindfulness and affirmations and and uh, mantras are not new they have they are ancient as you know they're they're things that people have been using for thousands of years so that um there's a few that i really love um obviously mm -hmm. um there's the om shreem um or you could say om shreem mahalakshmi namaha um and then om burzi and then there's um just find something that you resonate with that feels true to you. So if it's in English, you could just say, or whatever language that resonates with you that you speak, um, it could be something like, I choose, I, I am, I have, I am now grateful that, you know, whatever it is, prosperity is showering me, or um, that I realize that the universe is my source. I, that part of me that loves me, that, has my back that's my source of prosperity and eventually that will start to open up new neural pathways for you to really start trying different things that maybe there are opportunities maybe you hear something at the store that someone says to someone else and you wouldn't have thought about that and it kind of just sparks ideas and wisdom for you to create a new business whatever it is you're just going to be more open and you're not going to be on that autopilot of kind of like woe is me life is hard because we can easily go into that but creating disruption is really key so what is your go-to prosperity mantra of the the several that you list the one that you you know you um that you know it's it, it as you mentioned, is going to bring prosperity and abundance right away or ineffectively. So I think the Shreem, Om Shreem, Om Mahalakshmi Shreem. Namaha. And before I do it, I close my eyes and usually I start in the morning and I ask myself, this is like a little process that I do. You know, first of all, I observe my breath. I observe kind of like do a little scan of the body, check in, see how I'm feeling. And then I ask myself, what is that presence observing this body and mind having the experiences that it's having? What is that? What is that presence? So it really helps me go from like a singular view to this kind of universal, expanded, almost aerial view. And from that space, um, once I feel like I've stepped into that universal consciousness, which is really spirit right we all have this part of us um, and it's really what differentiates many of us with our animal kingdom friends which is um an awareness a consciousness more than what's happening right here and right now something can observe something is observing you thinking something within you is observing you taking that breath in and out what is that and at first it might not feel easy and comfortable, but as you start to um, question in this way and just sit and, and be in that space of connecting with that observer self, then you can start to be grateful. You can start to do mantras and affirmations. You can start to set your intention for the day because now what's gonna happen is you have just moved from almost like autopilot mode kind of like just getting through life to whoa and eventually if you practice that question enough you're going to have moments of 
I don't know what they call it. It could be transcendence. It could be bliss. It could be euphoria, connection. Imagine what could happen when you're operating from a peaceful space like that and and setting an intention and doing your affirmations because your heart is full of gratitude and you can actually see all the good in your life instead of focusing on what's not working because that's what society has told us to figure out. So, you know, basically doing that presence work and then starting your day with affirmations, go for a walk, do it in meditation, chant, uh, whatever resonates with you. Um, and then you can create that space for the world to start mirroring and really showing up more of that prosperity and the ease. And again, prosperity to, to me is really spirituality. It's, it's yeah. awareness, it's consciousness. So give me an idea of your, your usual schedule during the day. When you start meditating, what time you wake up, give me, I always like to steal people's, uh, you know, uh, ha habits and patterns, especially somebody spiritual like you. So, um, you know, what, what is your usual process when, when you wake up and how, when do you meditate and well, what do you eat and how do you go? <laughs> what, what, what's your basic, you understand what I'm trying to ask, right? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And I'm sure you have an amazing ritual too. <laughs> um, I'd love to hear yours too. Um, so yeah, just, you know, when you wake up, uh, gratitude, the first thing, just thank you, God, thank you, source universe for this day for this brand new day. Um, and then obviously a water is super important, um, good clean water. And then from there, just um, the first thing that I really do is get into that presence that, you know, I close my eyes, I'll, I'll sit up because if you if you lay down, sometimes you can go back to sleep and you want to be aware of that. So I'll find a seat, I'll kind of just get comfortable and uh, just start to ask myself, what is the presence focusing on this breath right now? What is that presence that's having this experience of another day? What is that? And then it almost creates this, to me, I call it connecting to source, connecting to the universe. You almost start to realize that you are way more than your experiences. You are not just your experiences. You are far greater. There's a, there's a consciousness there. So from there, um, I'll, you know, once I'm tapped in and connected, I'll get a little bit of sunlight if it's possible, if there's some sun outside um, and kind of, I don't sun gaze, I don't look at the sun, but I definitely, you know, um, look in a close direction, uh, but not right at it. And then I feel like that really fills me up. Um, I don't know uh, how else to describe it than I feel energized and I feel good. Um, and then, you know, just eating clean. I have a smoothie in the morning, uh, blueberries, banana, you know, some some other healthy things um, and eating, uh, basically honoring what your body is asking to eat because there's what your mind thinks it wants to eat, which is the sugar and all that stuff. But then there's the body, which what you'll know because have you ever had let's say you've you've had an apple pie or, or some type of dessert and it had sugar in it like not natural like you know process and you just have a crash an hour later and either you want to nap or you feel tired and you feel exhausted um when you eat for your body in a way that um fuels you and gives you life i like to call it you'll never have that you'll always feel good you'll feel energized if you want to sleep usually it's like easy and, and graceful it's not something that you know a lot of people have sleep issues at night so eating healthy and I and I don't want to say more than that because I'm not a doctor and I don't want to um, say too much uh, about what people should eat but just honor what your body is asking um, and you'll know and when you bring more presence into your life you will listen and you'll hear what your body and your intuition really wants from you and really that's what life is about you know i know the subject today has been a little bit more about prosperity and wealth and and money and um really money and that's an, another thing in the book is that once i realized that money is just almost like a its own consciousness money is a consciousness it's a living breathing alive energy and a lot of people abuse that energy. They're they're mistreating it and they're mean to it and they see it as evil and they don't see it spiritual. They you know, all these different things. 
Um, once you bring presence into your day and, and set the intention to really be aware that there's something more than the thoughts, something more, then you won't start to have to always believe the thoughts that you're having, especially the ones that don't feel good. Maybe some self-judgment, um, maybe some trauma from childhood. People said you couldn't do this or that. You will start to get clear that those are not you. you then they don't have to be you and you can make other decisions that can free you from that kind of experience. Because really, again, your, your experience is um, a reflection of how and what you're choosing to make habits for yourself. So money is just an extension of you. It's an extension of this awareness, this breathing, living energy. And how do you want to treat it? Do you want to treat it with kindness and love and dignity and respect and um, I see you, I love you? Really, that was one of the ways that I started becoming of service as well, aside from serving people and, and others, is really shifting my relationship with how I serve and treat money. It's not my, my servant. It's not something that um, I'm going to mistreat. And once I had this kind of like wake up call, oh my God, like, you know, uh, I was treating money disrespectfully. I thought it was evil to have it and be spiritual and like all that stuff. And once I cleared that and I understood that it's like a, you know, imagine if you're treating your mom like that or your best friend or some someone that you really care about. It really makes a huge difference. Just try that. Just see, you know, if you can start to shift how you treat money and that alone will start to make a huge difference. So I mentioned at the beginning of the interview that you had uh, the founder of the healing technology, the core work method. Tell me a little bit more about that and, and what that entails. Yeah. So thank you for that question. And um, I feel like I'm speaking too much. I want you to speak. No, too. please, I'm please. <laughs> I'm, I'm fascinated. That, that's what it's all about. I'm listening. <laughs> oh, thank you, brother. So um, yeah, uh, the core work kind of stemmed from my journey of struggle and suffering and PTSD and physical ailments and kind of learning different things and modalities and then, you know, getting a background in psychology and then going forward and into spiritual psychology, I realized that everything is energy. So we can call it neuroscience, we could call it quantum physics, whatever you want to call it, it they all have facets to understanding that your brain and your body is energy, your cells, your your if you know if you go up close, they're like moving and they're they're expanding and then they're just always um uh just ever expanding so basically um once i realized that we are not this dense matter thing there's there's something that can ebb and flow here and it's as simple as if you meditate and you focus on your breath you realize that it's almost like the ocean waves coming in and then going out coming in and going out oxygen you know just breathing in that oxygen so the whole idea of um, the core work method is to empower you in a way to remember that first and foremost you are the universe you are one with all there is and from that space what is possible how can we use fear how can we use uh, worry and stress and all these things that sometimes our emotions um, uh, you know try to protect us with how can we use that those as assets to actually heal and and create the life that we want so a lot of people think that you know whenever and we're taught this in society when whenever we're in fear that we have to do everything to not feel that or um uh, lack, usually you'll feel that somewhere, or whatever feeling comes up, whatever emotion, we usually bury it with either some kind of vice, whether it's watching TikTok or watching uh, something that kind of can keep our brain numb or uh, drinking or whatever it is that to, to a degree where you're not treating yourself and your body the way that you know you deserve to be treated. So that's because most people are actually taught to not feel the things that they're uncomfortable with. So the core work actually teaches you how to really step in and feel the things that, and some people actually, you know, you'll start 
they're new to this. They're like, I don't know how to feel. I can't feel anything. Well, and then so there's a process here that can really help them tap into how to feel that discomfort. And what's on the other side of that discomfort is peace, is ease, is grace. And then making decisions from that space instead of like a almost hyper vigilant or uh, stressful or reactive space, but actually what would happen in your life if you could make decisions from an empowered, peaceful space? Would it be different? Would it be the same? Would you um, create things a little differently? So that's kind of like the, the foundation to the core work method. So somebody listening right now, for sure, is going through some kind of fear. Maybe it's their finances or their health or their family situation, whatever it is. You talk a little bit about fear in that book and also right now. So help me to understand what is fear and how am I going to deal with it when it comes up? So fear is your mind's way of, of just saying that it needs your attention and love. That's it. So um, a lot of people have fancy definitions of it. And, and I, you know, I honor all of that, but at the same time, what I've found is that fear is valid. We don't want to get rid of it because when you try to get rid of something and when you try to fight against something, which is really you, you trying to fight against your mind or the mind towards itself, what happens is there, it's going to resist more. It's going to create more fear and more division and more separation. I mean, we're seeing it in the world right now. It's really at an all time high because there's a lot of healing that's happening. Um, so when there's fear, you know, rather than looking the other way and hiding and, and kind of uh, doing that, why not see it as an opportunity from your body and mind asking for you to show up more for yourself? How can you show up in a way that is you fully loving yourself? And so fear is, or we can change that word to guilt, shame, grief, whatever you're experiencing, it's so important to realize that it's valid, it's important, and we're not trying to get rid of it. The more you value and acknowledge those emotions that are really uncomfortable, the less power they have over you. So what would happen right now? I'm going to invite everyone just watching, just close your eyes and just kind of ask yourself how you're doing. Just check in, see how you're doing overall on a scale of one to 10, where are you right now? How are you feeling? 10 being great, one being not so great. Just check in to see how you feel. And just take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, just feel your body, just wiggle your fingers and toes and just get into your body. Good, let's take another deep breath in. And release. So from this space, just ask yourself again, how are you feeling? What's going on? Is there a bill that you have to pay that you're a little stressed out about? Do you feel great and you're ready to continue your day? Is there something causing you a little angst, just be really honest with yourself. This is your opportunity to show up for yourself. This is, you know, just like if you have a, a best friend or someone who really supports you. When they ask you how you're feeling, how you're doing, usually it feels good because, wow, you feel seen. This is you getting to do that for yourself. So just ask yourself, how are you feeling? So if you're feeling great, just hang on for one, one second, just be, you know, in that space of gratitude and then we'll continue on. But if you're feeling stressed, if you're feeling fear about what's going on in the world right now, if you're feeling worried about your finances, your body is a barometer and your body speaks to you. So I want you to check to see where are you holding that discomfort in your body? Where are you feeling that? So for me, I usually feel it in my stomach. Whenever I feel lack or stress or worry or fear, 
it's most of the time going to be in my stomach area. Some people feel it in their jaw. Some people feel it in their back, uh, maybe a tight neck or shoulders. Maybe they have a headache. Wherever it is for you, I want you to just find that. Just find that. Where is that discomfort being held in your body when you think about having to pay a bill that's really feeling uncomfortable for you? Where do you feel that? Once you find it, I want you to just sit with it. Just sit with it. Just be with it. If you want to place your hands on that part of your body, you can. So I'm going to put my hands on my stomach and just sit with any... Maybe I feel a little anxious, maybe a little tightness, maybe whatever feeling it is. Just sit with it. Here we go. So this is you acknowledging yourself. This is you loving yourself. And you're working with your body, which is a sacred temple, and your mind, you're working together with those parts of you so that they can feel acknowledged. And the you that I'm talking about is that observer self, that spirit, that conscious self. You get to do this for yourself. You get to love the parts of you that you thought were unlovable, the parts of you that you wanted to get rid of, the parts of you that you wanted to fix and change. You can just be that loving presence, almost like what the most loving grandmother or like a grandpa would be like, just no judgments, just fully. And if you don't have that as a reference point, it could be a teacher, it could be somebody that really showed you acknowledgement and love, no judgment. Be that for yourself. This is the first and most important step to healing anything, physical, emotional, mental, financial. You can do that for you. And it starts by just asking yourself how you feel and then seeing what comes up for you if you have any discomfort. Where are you carrying it in your body? So sometimes when you focus on that discomfort, your mind will start to, you know, come up with its own things like, oh, this is a waste of time. Oh, um, how's this helping me? Whatever. Thank your mind because your mind is just trying to keep itself safe. It's trying to keep things the same. Even when change sometimes is really good, the mind resists it because it is new. So be compassionate towards the, the part of you that's resisting. And then come back to the physical discomfort and just sit with that a little bit longer. Take a deep breath in. And release. And just sit with it. So from here, I want you to just ask yourself, what is the presence observing me, this body, and this mind having this experience? What is that presence? There's something observing itself. They call it self-realization, understanding, awareness. What is that presence that gets to just observe? and be that loving, compassionate presence to your body and your mind. Once you ask that question, I want you to imagine these gentle, loving hands being placed on that part of your body that was feeling tight, constricted, uncomfortable, as if this loving presence is just holding and honoring any lingering discomfort that needs to be acknowledged because that's just your body trying to speak to you. Just make sure you're breathing deep and release. So what will happen 
Sometimes it takes a few minutes. Sometimes it takes a little longer, like half an hour. I mean, we have lifetimes of, of healing to do sometimes. So just notice and keep checking in to that part of your body. And you'll notice there's going to be like a softening, a release, a, almost like a uh, feeling. That is the confirmation from your body that it has been acknowledged, that it has been seen by you. And that is also an acknowledgement from your mind that it has been acknowledged and seen by you. Once you have that, and it's almost like that firm grip kind of relaxes, express deep gratitude to your body and your mind and just thank them for playing such important roles in this healing process for you. Just deep gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All those times that you were pushing down your fear and emotions, those were assets for you trying to get you here right now, what we're doing, trying to get you to love yourself fully. People ask me, how do I love myself? How do I show up for myself? This is how you start. You ask yourself, how am I doing? What's going on? As like a best friend would to a dear friend. Then you see how you feel about it. You sit with that as long as you need. And then you ask yourself, you almost kind of like get into the lens of ob observation, like, wow, what is that presence watching this body and mind having this experience? From there, you'll place these loving, you can imagine them, or you can even put your hands on that part of your body. And you just sit there as long as you need until you have the release. Once you have that release, you have your confirmation, you express your gratitude, and then you continue your day. This is just, I do this every day. Um, this has helped me so much. I used to have so many issues, physical issues. Um, your body has intelligence. It knows how to heal itself. If we are not paying attention to it, it's going to get louder and louder and louder until we pay attention. So the same way with our mind, if you notice you're lashing out or angry or frustrated, it's just because your mind needs your attention. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, whether it's going and finding a mate or a partner or whatnot, that it's really about fixing themselves or, you know, finding their ha other half, but it really should be you finding yourself and connecting with yourself and then connecting with others from the space of you are already whole and complete. Imagine what life would look like when you don't need anything from anyone, but you just get stuff because you're you and it's enjoyable. That's kind of the approach. So think about right now, just one thing in your life that you would like to just create more of and ask yourself how you feel about that. How you feel? Do you feel more excited? Do you feel more like you're on that path? Or do you feel like, oh man, this is going to be really hard? And ask yourself, where am I feeling this? Or first of all, how do I feel about the fact that this is going to be really hard? Where am I feeling it? And go back through the process. I'm sure you can watch this video later again and again. Um, and that's really a great place to start not only your healing, but your prosperity journey, because it's all connected. Now, I, I encounter a lot of people looking for healing that is coming from childhood trauma that creates a programmed response that almost it's before they have the ability to to, to go in and meditate and find it. Something will happen at the shop at the supermarket or something, and they immediately are reacting from a trauma based program. Do you have any techniques that uh, that can help someone like that? Because sometimes that's so deeply held, it's hard to get rid of. Yes. So one of the other aspects of the core work is understanding once you really connect with your presence, right, your conscious self, you realize that you are a multidimensional being. So you are not just this singular kind of like uh, being that is that is not um anything more than what's happening here. You are a multidimensional being, meaning you can use your imagination and visualization to be able to tap into timelines and uh, different space that is much more, um, uh, you know, you can go back, let's say, you're to your childhood right before some of that trauma happened. And you as the adult self can be that healing 
presence for that part of you so that you can protect them and say what that child couldn't say to those people or those experiences that hurt them or abused them or created some of this um, shock and trauma in their lives. You have the power to do that. And a lot of times, um, you know, when, when I'm working with that specific method, a lot of people say, well, imagination, this is trivial, it's not real. As kids, we are like told to use our imagination. We are told it's like it's celebrated. But as you get older, I don't know if it's because a lot of people get jaded or whatnot. There's this idea that imagination or visualization or, you know, doing things like that is childish or it's not mature, but it couldn't be further from that. Like Albert Einstein and, um, you know, a lot of the inventors and the musicians and the artists, they, the one thing they can do is really tap into that part of themselves that allows them to be in that creative imagination and visualization. So if you're experiencing some kind of block there, that's a good thing to acknowledge. And from there, really develop your imagination again to the point of understanding that you can use it to heal yourself. And so how do you do that? You There's different techniques, there's different processes, but basically you can go to a timeline where because your inner child is still inside of you, they've experienced, you know, it's real for them. And that's why you're feeling um, triggered sometimes and you feel like you have no control over something. Um, it's because that child is not feeling safe. So what can you do to go back and become that protector, that loving, compassionate, understanding adult self to that child that is going to almost like create a barrier from a lot of the shock and struggle and hardship. That's one of the things that I used um, because I used to see uh, actually anytime I heard a thunderstorm or fireworks, it would like freak me out. Um, so once I was able to understand, um, you know, that I can be that protector, the, the compassionate, loving parent, let's call it, to that child that they so needed at that time, and no one was there for them in that way, I can be that now. And you can mm -hmm. use um, the awareness that you are multidimensional to do that. And that's a, another process that we can do at some time, but that's that's hopefully that answered your question. It sounds similar. Uh, one one teacher I talk about on my channel is Neville Goddard. He would he would teach people that they could revise their past. He would nice. see would, that you could go back, imagine that it happened differently. Um, continually wow. imagining as richly as you can and then suddenly you start to see changes in your present state um, as you break that that programming it's kind of similar you're going nice. back and reprogramming it, almost like time travel right absolutely and i love that you said that because this is not new every mm -mm. you know from the beginning of time there's there's this awareness and and our job when we bring and practice more presence is to be open and in the unique beautiful configuration that is you you will share your message or your work or whatever it is that you have to like just like you you know you're you're sharing and inspiring so many people um so beautifully and that's to me is just a confirmation that you said that so I, I always like to ask some crazy questions. When I talk to somebody that's in the spiritual field, you're encountering people all the time. And so you get a sense for changes in the world. It's, you know, you're, you're dealing with people all over the world. Do you notice a discernible change spiritually in the world now than perhaps 10 years ago in reality, in the way that people are interacting spiritually and understanding their relationship with themselves and God? Uh, I'd love to get your perspective on how you see the world changing. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's happening moment to moment at this point. Things are speeding up um, and things that you can do to check to see if you are sort of experiencing that yourself. Let's say you're new to spirituality or, you know, maybe kind of just dipping your toe in it is ask yourself just a year ago from a year ago to now, what has changed in your life? Are you the same person? Are you noticing a lot more changes? Are you noticing um, either the discomfort is getting really uncomfortable, or if you're doing the work, the inner work, I like to call it, um, 
things are shifting much more quickly. You're kind of like, you know, you might be thinking something and then like a few days later it shows up. You're like, whoa, that's crazy. Um, so that's where I would start. And then from there to answer your question, absolutely. I mean, there's definitely, and it seems like it could be the opposite where there's a lot of division and a lot of, um, uh, you know, turbulence and all of that, but there's a lot of good and you don't really see it reported on the news or you know, I don't watch the news, but you don't really hear about all the, the good stuff happening where people are really stepping up and, and helping each other and supporting each other um, and making uh, this planet a better planet um, for all of us to kind of like work together and, and create this amazing, you know, we're a family. We are a freaking family. And I think all this division is just the trauma and the uh, shock and the, the stuff that's been going on around that from just the daily habitual lifestyle of so many generations that were passed down from one to the other. But look at the kids now. They are so different than even the kids from 20 years ago. I mean, things are changing so fast. So I'm very excited. Technology obviously is changing probably a little too fast for some people. Uh, but I think eventually technology will connect with spirituality and, and really create amazing things. I mean, we're hearing a lot about it. Um, I know when I first heard about that whole metaverse thing, I was like, that's interesting. Um, but uh, I think it's an interesting concept. But at the same time, uh, there's something so much bigger than that and so much greater that is already here. It's already happening. And I think it's just another way to remind people that the power has always been inside of them and they don't need a simulation or some kind of other thing to escape. Like they can, you have what you need inside of you, which is divine wisdom, uh, love, um, everything that you've wanted, you already have that inside of you. And I think all these things are kind of like going to bring us back to that eventually. I, I think if you really think it through, if, if the world becomes more spiritual, there's going to be a natural reaction for those that are still asleep and unconscious to that spirituality. It, it, there'll be, it'll, it'll appear if you're just watching the world that there's more division, that there's more anger and hatred because they're reacting to the greater level of spirituality so you your first instinct might be oh the world's going to hell all these people there's wars and stuff but really it's it's a sign that there are major transformations that people are reacting to right yeah that, yes. that's kind of what i feel like I, I like to use the word activating people are being activated um because yes at first it's the reaction but the reaction events eventually dissolves what's after that what's left right. and i think we're gonna we're gonna find out i mean we're seeing it and those who are kind of like who have been kind of doing the work for decades now and um may, maybe even longer like you said neville really set he was like a, a precedent for uh this kind of consciousness and awareness uh, along with so many other teachers that came before mm -hmm. um really we're seeing all that happen it's like it's manifesting now we're seeing the physical effects where masses are actually having meditation uh, at the same time where they visualize peace or you know or prayer or whatever it is um to come together and create this change i think that's why things are speeding up so fast there also appears to be a discernible m movement that is sort of a service to self narcissistic that takes spirituality sometimes and and you know unfortunately uses it against people you see it in in weird conspiracy movements and in other discussions that that seem maybe it's a natural thing that will happen um, people think they're being spiritual when they're just falling for fear-based other manipulations how do you deal with that as a spiritual teacher in teaching people to you know interact in the world that they're in it's the most simple thing does this feel expansive or is this contracting me the yes. second you feel fear or you feel some type of way go into that space of being the loving presence for that because if you don't that fear will start to get bigger and bigger mm -hmm. and even if you're like oh well this isn't expanding expanding me this is so uncomfortable 
but it gets so overwhelming. It kind of like feels like, ah, oh, I can't do anything about it. So that's why having these openings for yourself, which is to really treat yourself using you as the reference point to how you want the world to treat you and how you want to treat the world using you as that kind of like ground zero for you to really create the healing in the world. You know, when you, um, read an empowering book that's going to make you feel expansive or when you listen to a, a chat like this or whatnot you're healing humanity it's not like having to put your hands on somebody and sing kumbaya or whatever you can do that that's great but just doing the things that will take care of you in such a way where you're honoring yourself you're loving yourself you're showing up for yourself you're going to naturally do that for others and most people who are interested in this stuff have been doing it for others their whole life now it's time for them to do it for themselves so yeah but i understand what you're saying um there's a lot of that where they use some of the principles and then there's like an agenda there's kind of like a um disempowering so the question does this feel expansive is this liberating me in a real authentic way uh, where I feel like I'm being my full self, like I'm being fully accepted for my for who I am? Or is there like some kind of like hierarchy or you can't do this or this has to be like that or, oh, there's the end of the world's coming. Like right. those types of things are actually disempowering you. So does it feel expansive or does it contract me? That's the question I ask myself. It's um, worked and, so far. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. I, I resonate in the same way. So um, I, more and more as I awaken and I become aware and see the world around me as a reflection of myself, I find events that happen in the past that, uh, I, you know, I'd be, that would traumatize me or they're, they're catalysts where it's an argument with somebody or something happens when I'm on the street. Uh, I look forward to these events. Now I start to find that th these are events that, that my soul wants me to right now, my, my soul wants to experience this, uh, because, um, as I like to say, I'm an active agent of love, a secret agent of love. And suddenly in these moments, I discover I am the only love that exists in this situation right now. And that's why I'm here. I'm here mm -hmm. to bring the love. And so you find yourself in these weird situations. Maybe people are arguing or something else. And you see, why is this happening to me? Because you're the love. You know, mm -hmm. I, you know I've said that to other people. And it's like a light bulb moment. Um, you, you, you're not attracting it. You're there to, to resolve it and change it and transform it. Absolutely. You said that so beautifully. And I think, you know, even a lot of people, like if we want to talk about like Buddha or Jesus or Kuan Yin or whatnot, that's what they did. They just were holding space. They were holding that space of love and allowing whatever needs to happen to happen to be resolved so that, you know, we can move forward. So you're doing that, brother. And thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so I just want to thank you for, for for going over this stuff and and teaching us. You have some amazing. You also have easy breezy miracles, right? That's the. I haven't gotten a chance to read that, but I'm looking forward to reading it as soon, soon as we get done here. And easy breezy prosperity. And everybody can find your website at www.emmanueldagger.com. Emmanuel with two M's, D A G A T R. And on your website, you can get three free meditations. Correct. Um, and you have some other resources available, period. And that is a wonderful thing. So, you know, uh, people like you are changing the world and, and you're, you're serving and I honor you and I thank you because it would have been so easy going back to your origin story when you're sleeping on that cement floor to say, oh, the world hates me. It's terrible. I'm going to be angry. I'm going to be spiteful. And, and you could you could have easily turn that path. You see it with everybody. If, if somebody out there right now is sleeping on concrete or they're struggling and they're in a really bad environment, country situation, conflict in the world, I want you to think about Emmanuel because you have a choice. You have a choice. You can take this catalyst that's happening to you and you, you can avoid the woe is me and say, thank you for this wonderful experience because you can use it as the fuel to completely change the universe. And you're an example of that. And it's so wonderful to have an example. I can say, look over at Emmanuel, he did it, right? And you can do it too. If you're listening to this right now and you're struggling and it feels like there's no hope, there's hope. 
There's always hope. So much wonderful things are going to happen to you if you can encounter it from that neutral observer state and find that presence and that God within you because the world is yours. You created it and it's all yours. And so thank you, Emmanuel, for being that example for all of us. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I, everything that you say, I'm sending you so much back, uh, love and, and thank you for all that you're doing and being and just your presence and, and everyone who's watching. Um, I just want to celebrate you. The fact that even if you watch like a minute of this, it's amazing because it means you're open and you're ready to create some kind of miracle or change or expansion in your life. So I'm so grateful for you as well. Thank you, Emmanuel. And once again, it's emmanueldagger.com. And welcome to the Reality Revolution.